Good morning. This is Chris Dawson from Tamebay, and welcome to our webinar um, on Amazon FBA changes, um, what you need to know, and also the international opportunity that is available for you there. Um, for those that don't know me, I'm editor of Tame Bay and have been since I, I co-founded it um, almost 14 years ago. Um, we've been following the latest changes in e-commerce on Tame Bay, and if you're not a regular follower, you'll find us at tamebay.com. But today we've got some massively exciting news to share on what's going to be happening with Amazon after the 1st of January 2021, and also um, to talk about the international opportunities that are presenting themselves to UK merchants. Now, I'm absolutely delighted to be joined today by Tom Dixon from DIT, um, who's got a wealth of experience um, in the e-commerce industry, and specifically on overseas trade, to share with us. So, welcome, Tom. How are you? Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining today. Really excited to um, be talking to you guys, which proved a very popular subject. There's lots of you uh, logged in and listening, so hopefully we'll have some really good content to discuss and hopefully answer some of the burning questions um, for the upcoming changes. So just a few little bits of housekeeping for today. If you do have any burning questions, um, you should be able to see a question panel where you can actually submit your questions. And um, to Christopher, not myself, there's another Chris on the line. Um, is there any sound? Um, you couldn't hear sound because the webinar hadn't started yet, but we should be, should be good from now on. We will try and answer as many questions as you've got today, but immediately following the webinar, we'll be publishing a post on Tame Bay with some more of the news from Amazon. We've got some links and help, help, help contact points for you today. And we will also be recording today's webinar. And after the bank holiday, it will be available on Tame Bay and Tame Bay TV on YouTube to rewatch. So if you miss anything, don't worry, you will be able to watch the entire webinar again at your own leisure um, very, very, very soon, within a couple of days. Um, so without further ado, um, Tom, would you like to get going? Great. Thanks, Chris. Um, yeah, so first of all, I'm just going to take a few moments to uh, talk about the team that I work in and the help available to UK businesses. So my name's Tom, and I work in the e-exporting team um, at the Department for International Trade. Um, I'm not in charge of my slides, so I'm just going to ask Chris to uh, flip to the next slide if possible. Um, so the exporting programme, the Department for International Trade has a number of uh, different services designed to help companies, whether you're starting to export or increase your exports to existing markets. Um, the exporting programme was set up in 2014 um, specifically designed to help UK companies sell online. Uh, there are four key services which you can see on your screen now that we offer. Uh, there are four key services. Uh, first of all, we partner with marketplaces around the world. Uh, in some cases, we've negotiated exclusive deals with those marketplaces, such as reduction in platform fees or reduced commissions or, or other industry offers. Uh, secondly, we have a tool called Selling Online Overseas. I'll show you in an upcoming slide a bit more about that. Um, thirdly, we run what we call great promotions with our partner marketplaces. Uh, this is where we've negotiated typically free merchandising space on the home page um, that, uh, that UK merchants can take advantage of and see a real uplift in sales. Um, finally, we have a network of our e-commerce advisors. I think it's the most important service that we offer. Um, so they're located around the UK. And they help businesses one-to-one -one with anything from troubleshooting marketplace seller account issues, uh, introducing logistics suppliers, for example, working with integrators and so on. So anything to do with e-commerce, your local e-commerce advisor can, can help you. So if you haven't already, do, get, do log on to the great.gov.uk website, find your local office and do get in touch with um, your local e-commerce advisor. Uh, just flip to the next slide, please, Chris. Brilliant. So uh, on your screen now, this shows the great.gov.uk website. Uh, this shows you where you can find more about the exporting program. You'll also find some really good uh, case studies of UK brands who are doing really well on marketplaces. 
Um, it's also where you can access the Selling Online Overseas tool, which I mentioned earlier. Um, just flip to the next slide, please, Chris. Uh, so this is what you'll see when you go onto the Selling Online Overseas um, site. It's basically a marketplace finder. Uh, you'll see a drop down on the left where you can select the category of products that you sell. Um, and also on the right, you'll see uh, regions and countries that you might be interested in selling into. Hit the Find Your Marketplace um, button. You'll be displayed various different marketplaces that might be suitable for your business. I think it's really relevant right now, especially with the FBA changes that are coming up. Um, it might be a good idea right now to have a look at those different different regions. And what we're seeing at the moment is lots of people interested in the English-speaking regions such as New Zealand, Australia, and the US and Canada, obviously being easier markets to enter because of the there isn't a language barrier. Um, it's a really good idea to have a look at those marketplaces now. We've got some really good partners, especially in New Zealand, that are seeing a real uptake in, in merchants at the moment. So do do log in, do have a look, get in touch with your e-commerce advisor and, and chat chat about those exciting new marketplaces. Um, just go on to the next slide, please, please Chris. <laughs> Um, so this is just an example. If you are to use the Selling Online Overseas tool, um, this is an example of what you'll be displayed. So this is showing Amazon USA. Um, there's lots and lots of different marketplaces on there. I think there's 47 now. Um, and this page will just show you absolutely everything you need to know about that marketplace. Um, it will show you seller fees, payment info, any translation help, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that is kind of it from me. Um, if you want to log on to the next slide, Chris. So the hot topic that we're going to talk about today is the upcoming changes to Amazon FBA. Um, we know lots of people read the really good article on Tame Bay a couple of weeks ago. I think, Chris, was it your record um, article? Uh, yeah, it had an enormous number of posts. And I think we, we, we should set the scene here, really, that obviously the UK voted to leave the EU and this has meant that um, uh, every company that um, is, is based in the UK um, will experience changes. Now, for, from Amazon's point of view, Amazon has said that as there's a customs, going to be a customs border in place as of the 1st of January 2021, additional information is required to basically verify the, the, the nature and the value of the products that are moving across the border. And as that information um, has to be provided by selling partners and Amazon doesn't have that information, they will no longer be able to move products across the border on behalf of their, their, their merchants. And this is why um, Amazon have had to say that as of the 1st of January, EFN and Pan-EU FBA will be restricted to mainland Europe only, and the UK will be treated as a separate entity. Now, obviously, um, it's very, very important for a lot of merchants that they're able to carry on selling into Europe. And today, um, we're delighted to be able to share um, some of the information that Amazon have provided to, to the IT and Pain Bay on how, how, how you'll be able to do this. Um, so really, today, today is um, the, the, the starting point um, for how you'll be selling into Europe from the 1st of January. Yeah, I think we were, we were chatting just before the webinar, Chris, weren't we? The, the, um, it's been really good timing because if you haven't seen it already and you do have a Seller Central account, Amazon have published a page that covers most of um, the topics we think and there's some really good FAQs in there that should that should cover um, all of your questions. I think it's probably a good idea just to sort of summarize the changes that are coming. So the slide that's on your screen now is probably a bit wordy but there's no other way of putting it really. So from January the 1st 2021 there'll be a number of changes to the way Amazon operates across the new UK EU customs border. Uh, I'm just going to have to apologise because there is a siren going past my window at the moment, so I'm just going to mute myself. Um, Chris, if you wanted to take over for a sec. Ah, the delights of working from home. 
it's all right, it's, it's gone now. Um, so number of changes. So pan European FBA inventory transfers will stop between the UK and EU. However, pan European FBA will continue to proactively transfer inventory across the EU region, supporting your sales on our Germany, France, Italy and Spain sites. Um, do you have any comments on that part, Chris? No, I think it, it's very clear that um, Brexit has already happened. We've technically left the EU. And as of the 1st of January, the transition agreement that was negotiated expires and there will be new trade arrangements. Not entirely sure exactly what, what, what they will be currently, but we'll be waiting for the news from the government on that. But what we do know is definitely that the transition agreement will expire and it will be time um, to start trading in a different way. Yeah, absolutely. I think the, the one thing to note here is that although it might seem quite close to the to the deadline, I think there's still plenty of time for everyone to get ready for the upcoming changes, especially if you are using FBA. Um, so again, again, this is kind of the point of the webinar today to kind of go through those those questions and, and see what you need to do and make sure that everyone's on the same page and fully ready um, for what's coming up. Um, so just moving on to the second couple of points there, FBA offers that are fulfilled by EFM will not be fulfilled across the UK EU border, which we've already covered. Uh, minimal disruption is expected for goods sent by selling partners directly to UK or EU from outside of Europe uh, into an Amazon fulfillment centre, as these goods already cross a customs border and the process is not expected to change in the UK or EU. So that, that kind of says nothing changes on, on that part. Um, an important part on the second part of this slide is until December 31st, 2020, your Amazon business will operate as, as usual. So if you are using EFM, um, you don't have to change anything right now, but it's but it's good to have some foresight and, and get ready for those changes that are coming up in January. I think one of the questions, again, Chris, that we were talking about um, just before the webinar is a question that we've seen quite a lot coming in from uh, UK businesses that we that we assist. Um, what will happen to my inventory placed in the UK, EU, after the new customs border goes up on January the 1st, 2021? Yeah, and I think there's two important things to note here. Number one is um, your account will continue to operate exactly as it does currently until the 1st of January. This means that you should carry on with EFN and PANI USBA if that's what you're using right through the Christmas peak period because no one wants their Christmas um, sales to be disrupted. What Amazon has said to your inventory placed in the UK or EU after the customs border goes up on the 1st of January is it will continue to be sold in the UK and EU, but Amazon will no longer move it across the UK EU border. If you want, you can still remove your stock from fulfillment centers to what they class as a local address. Um, through the standard Amazon removals program, and obviously the disposal program is available as well. Once it's been removed, you can then ship it across the UK EU border if you wish to do so. So I suspect it may be for some people that some of your stock will end up in the UK and some may end up in Europe if you're using Pan EU FBA. And this probably does mean that you have to either sell your stock or if it's in Europe, remove it to a local EU address or you, you use the disposal order. But the good news is um, if, if you've got stock in Europe, it's probably selling and selling well at the moment due to the pandemic anyway. And um, it will continue to be sold after um, the 1st of January. It will just, Amazon will just no longer move it across the border. And that's where replenishing your stock into Europe um, will become important, which, which, which we'll be moving on to in a couple of minutes. Yeah, thanks for that, because I think it's a really, a really important part of this is what to, what you can do up until the changes come into play um, and that 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 basically means sell like you said sell through your inventory or, or get it out um, and do a removal order it's really important to do that before those changes come in um, should, we, should we move on to the next slide Chris sure so this is um, the it's, it's, basically a copy and paste from the Amazon help page that they put up live a couple of days ago. Um, and this covers, covers your MFN. So seller, seller fulfilled orders can continue to be fulfilled across the U UK EU border. It will be the selling partner's responsibility to ensure all duties and tariffs are paid prior to delivery to the customer. So I think 
this is basically saying that if you are self-fulfilling, um, you need to treat your you, your EU orders as if they're non-EU orders. Um, I don't think it's that complicated, Chris. I think um, that's pretty straightforward, that part. I don't know what you think. Yeah, and the the only um, difference will be actually with your carrier and the carrier arrangements who will be able to advise you closer to the time um, on the, their procedures and customs notifications, etc. they require. Um, but don't forget, this will be happening not just for your sales on Amazon to the EU. It will equally apply if you're selling on eBay, on your own website, or if you're selling on other marketplaces or social media platforms, um, there will be a customs border and uh, there'll be duties and tariffs to be paid. And um, you, you, your carriers will um, be, be able to assist you with this. Absolutely. Yeah, I think most people uh, listening so I, I imagine, will be selling uh, to non-EU countries anyway. So it's just a case of treating those the same. Like you said, Chris, yeah. it's a really good idea to get in touch with your carriers now and just check what those what those um what the protocols are going to be and what procedures they expect you to 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 undertake um, and and i think the, the one important thing to note on here is that amazon said it will be the selling partner's responsibility to ensure all duties and tariffs are paid prior to delivery to the customer so what they're talking about is delivery duty paid or ddp as it's known in the industry you will need to ensure if you're shipping to Europe that um, any any duty and ta tariffs are paid up front prior to delivery to the customer, according to Amazon's note here. Absolutely, and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that most sellers, again, listening today, will have their own P&L sheet, so it's important to include those when pricing and to include all those duties, et cetera. Um, I think it's probably, Good idea to move on to the next slide, um, which is all about uh, preparing for January 2021. So this is again from Amazon's help page and, and what they say you should do to prepare uh, for January. So how to protect your sales, to mitigate the impact of these changes, you should consider splitting your inventory and sending it to a fulfillment centre in the UK and the EU so that you have sufficient stock either side of the new customs border. This may require you to ship your products across the EU, UK EU customs border. To ship products across a customs border, you will require the following information as part of the customs declaration. Then it goes on to talk about VAT numbers, EORI numbers, and the country of origin information, which I think is a really important part to, to consider and make sure that you're you're fully ready um, for those changes. I don't, don't know what your thoughts are on that, Chris. Yeah, and I think the, 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 the VAT numbers and the EORI numbers are kind of ticking the box things, or the EORI number at least is. The VAT numbers I'm saying it's a tick in the box, and that is because if you're already selling using PANI USBA, you have probably already ha had to consider registering for VAT in, in the countries where your, your goods are being stored already, if you've hit certain thresholds. Um, if you haven't, then you will need to register for these VAT numbers. The country of origin information, again, should be a relative tick in the box um, because as part of the EU at the moment, um, you, you, you should have been gathering this information already for your, for your products um, because we're in the EU already. So hopefully you, you've got most of the information that you, you need there. Um, the, the biggest requirement will be for the sellers that haven't hit um, that number, the re requirement to register for that numbers in EU countries yet. Um, but you, you are likely to need to be prepared to, to do so in order to carry on selling into um, the EU. Just as if there are any American or Canadian, Australian, Chinese sellers listening today that already sell into the EU, they will have already had to register for, for, for at least one EU VAT number. Um, and now once the UK is, um, the transition agreement expires, then um, we in the UK will also have to um, register for VAT. Um, we've got one interesting question come in. In fact, we've got a ton of questions. And by the way, um, we're not going to have time, and I apologise for this, to answer them all today. But we will try and answer them on Tame Bay Post um, after the event. Um, but the question that's come in is, if, if, we, if we focus on sending stock into one country, e.g. France, 
could Amazon move our stock from France into Germany, etc.? That depends a little bit on how you place your stock. Um, if you're using, um, if you want to access Pani USDA, which will still be available for all EU countries, just not the UK, then yes, once your stock is in France, then Amazon could move it into other countries as well. Yeah, I think that's, that's, a, that's a really that's a really good question. I was just going to make a comment on the the VAT numbers and registering in uh, in different countries. It's important to recognise that this is going to work the other way around as well. So for French sellers or German sellers, Italian, Spanish, they'll have to register in the UK as well. So there might be an opportunity here for um, you might see that your domestic sales uh, will increase because there might be some sellers that won't won't get round to doing that. Um, so it's important not to ignore your domestic sales and because I think there's probably an opportunity there. I don't know if you had any thoughts on that, Chris. Yeah, definitely. At the moment, um, I've frequently bought something online and it's come from maybe a German seller or a French seller. And unless those sellers um, do the same as we will in the UK in reverse, which is actually physically place their stock in the UK, which means they'll need a UK VAT number, then they'll also miss out on Pan EU, FBA and ESN. And additionally, if there are any um, sellers outside the, the EU listening today from the US or wherever, um, you may already be placing your stock into um, Europe. You may actually be placing it into the UK. You're going to have to split your stock and place some into the UK and some into Europe um, and, or, or vice versa. If you currently send your stock into Germany, you also, if you still want to send to the UK, you have to send some of your stock to the UK as well. So it, it is quite a, a, a major change, um, um, but but one that we, we need to get to grips with. And the, the good news is there is is, is is still sort of four, four or five months before um, it, it, this happens, um, which is why um, we're, we're sharing this information today. Thanks for that, Chris. So do we want to do we want to move on to some of the other questions that are coming in? Because we've got lots and lots of questions coming in, so it's probably a good idea to try and get through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, there's an absolute ton of questions coming in. So um, one, one I'm going to pass to you from Alex. So would I be right in saying that I can register for VAT in Germany and fulfil all orders all over Europe using EFN, a, a bit like a Nexus in America? Um, I think, uh, go on, sorry Chris, you're going I, to... I think this depends a little bit on where your stock is being kept and whether your, your stock remains in Germany or some of it is positioned in other EU countries. Um, because um, from, 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 from memory, and you can correct me on this Tom, if you store stock in a country and sell it from a country, then you have to register for VAT in that country. Um, but if you're selling it into other EU territories, then you probably need a VAT number there as well. Yeah, that, that's my understanding. From what from what I'm reading, I think it's relatively clear that that, that is the um, procedure that you have to that you have to undertake. So I think it's relatively simple. Um, answer is is yes, you have to register for that VAT in the country if you're selling into that country. And then a non Amazon question, but important for anyone exporting from Philip, does one need to have a legal entity in a given EU country to obtain an EORI number? Uh, my understanding is no. I don't think you do need to have a legal entity. Um, do you have any uh, differing opinions on that, Chris? Uh, I, I'm hearing conflicting information. and General consensus is that if you've got a UK EORI number, that should be sufficient. But Amazon's advice is that you will need an EORI number in each country you register in. However, in the UK, if you apply for a brand new VAT number today, you'll pretty much automatically be assigned an EORI number. So I suspect, and it, this would need confirming, that if you register for that in say Germany, then you'd probably automatically get a German EORI number um, a, a, alongside. And that, and that, that leads into... An... I was going to say yeah. that, that is my understanding. And also, on, I'm just going to signpost back to the Amazon page. When you hit that link, uh, prepare your Amazon business uh, for the changes in 2021, there's a whole section there on VAT numbers and EORI numbers and then lots of links on 
how to obtain those numbers and what numbers you do need to, to make sure that if you are listening, do log on to that page and make sure that you've, you've got the correct numbers. It, it's, it's a really good page, actually, that Amazon have put together. So, so do make sure that you log in and, and have a look at that. And then a question from Paul. Is it possible to register for VAT in an EU country without having a registered business there? I think that's the I think that's the same question as the last one, I believe. And I, my understanding is, no, I don't think you need to have a legal entity there. I think you can just register with a UK address. And then a question for Louise. Um, when the new arrangements in 2021 for overseas goods sold on marketplaces come in, um, will Amazon collect VAT on behalf of UK sellers or only overseas sellers? And I think what Lu Louise is referring to here is that um, the, the, the HM Customs have said that from the 1st of January, they're going to require marketplaces to collect VAT on behalf of overseas merchants. So no, this won't apply to UK sellers. UK sellers will still handle their own VAT. But I think it's important to realize that if, if you're a European seller going to sell into the UK, then yes, the U Amazon and eBay and other marketplaces may collect your VAT. But if you're selling from other platforms such as social media platforms or your own website, you will still be responsible for collecting VAT on those sales. And I suspect that sooner or later, some of the EU countries will require marketplaces to collect VAT as well. And again, if you're domestic in that country, then you'll almost certainly still be responsible for your own VAT. So a lot of questions coming on around VAT. So I think what we should do is try and address that in a, a bit more detail, um, perhaps in a blog post in, in, in Pain Bay after the webinar. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think I don't know if we've mentioned it already, but um, there will be a blog post going up on Tame Bay in a couple of days, and I think towards the middle of next week there'll be a recording of this webinar, um, along with the links to the to the help page that I keep talking about on Amazon. So look out for those as well. All right. Shall we move on to the next slide? Yeah, the, ne the next slide is, is just a continuation of um, the Amazon uh, page that's preparing for January 2021. So it moves on from VAT numbers, EORI numbers and country of origin information onto the harmonized system codes, licenses and certifications um, and providing custom clearance documents. Um, I think, it's again, it's, it's, it's relatively straightforward. I think the licenses and certifications um, point is, is quite a good one as well. It's checking with your suppliers and your distribution agreements that you do have the relevant permissions um, to, to sell cross-border and things like that. So it's, it's a good idea, again, to check with your suppliers and your distribution partners um, that you've got the right procedures in place. So um, while we're talking about customs clearance documents again, we've got a really interesting question from Audrey. Audrey trades from Northern Ireland and wants to know how this will affect sending things to the EU, as they'll, 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 they'll still they'll still be part of the EU, which is not quite part of the EU, but they won't have to go through customs clearance to send products to England, etc., because um, there's some slightly different arrangements for Northern Ireland. Do you want to touch on that, Tom? Yeah, I think if it's in the context as Amazon, I think you can treat your the changes will affect um, a Northern Irish seller because they'll be fulfilling from the UK and using EFN. So I think those changes will will apply. Um, I don't know what you don't know what you think on that, Chris. I I have to confess to I, I know that there are some differences to how Northern Ireland will be treated with free movement of goods between Northern and Southern Ireland, but I'm not an expert on this area. So I think that, that is, again is one we'll, we'll have to revisit. Yeah, it's an interesting question. And it, it's worth noting here that we are in uh, Tame Bay and ourselves at the exporting program are in dialogue with Amazon. So it's definitely a question that we can follow up with um, with them on um, and just, just get some clarification if there is um, any difference with a Northern Irish seller. So um, I will do my best to follow up on that um, and hopefully we can get that in the blog post. And then a question from Sarah. Does this ultimately mean that instead of sending stock to a UK Amazon fulfillment centre, we will send it to a Europe fulfillment centre. And I think, Sarah, the answer to this is in two parts. That yes, 
you will still send stock to a UK fulfillment centre, but it will only be used for fulfilling orders to UK customers. So you will also have to send stock to a European fulfillment centre. So you're going to have to split your stock. And this is something that Amazon has been absolutely brilliant at, is managing your stock profile for you. And in the past, Amazon has decided how much of your stock with EFN that they will locate to a, um, sorry, not EFN, with pan-European FBA and multi-country inventory, how much of your stock will move to different countries. And, and that's a decision you're going to have to make for yourself now. So you'll need to check your records and, and your stats on, do you sell 50% UK, 50% Europe? Is it 70-30? Is it 60-40? And you're going to have to decide how much stock you, you actually send to Europe. Now, currently, there are two um, programs running with Amazon to assist you with this and get you started shipping stock to Europe. They have a, um, an incentive at the moment for sending um, parcels, and specifically small parcels, not pallets of inventory, into warehouses in Germany, Poland, and the Czech Republic. And they're currently doing that with free carriage. They haven't said how long that will continue for, but currently... If you, if you want to get some experience of sending stock to Europe, you can start sending a few small boxes of inventory um, to European warehouses using the um, Amazon, Amazon's Partners Carrier Program, and Amazon will pick up the carriage charge for you. Now, obviously, after the 1st of January, there will be some changes to this. At some point, Amazon will stop picking up the tab, but more importantly, you will have to make sure you're registered for that in the country you're sending the goods to, and you will have to pay complete customs declarations, etc. And the other thing Amazon are doing is they've um, announced a new program for less than truckload freight, which effectively means pallet freight, um, which they're, they're accepting into warehouses as well. So both of those worth investigating. And you'll find, a, find, find some information on that on, on Tame Bay or in Amazon Seller Central News. I was just going to um, jump in there and touch on the, the first point about, um, as you mentioned, Amazon have been really good up until now deciding where your stock should be. And the decision is now on the seller of how much stock should be in each country. This is a good time to have a look at your, your order reports. I don't think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, if you know, but I don't think there's a report within Seller Central that actually shows you how much of your stock is being sold in each country, but you can do it through your order download. So it's just a case of looking through your orders over the last year or so and just working out how much how much stock you think you'll need in those countries. So it's a really good time to delve into your orders and, and get some insight into where your orders are coming from. Um, it, it's just a good good time to have a look through the, the really good business reports that they have in Amazon and look through your downloads as well. And another really interesting question is, what are bonded warehouses and would these help? Um, E.g. in the Netherlands, for example. Um, what do you need to, to use these and do you need to register company details? Now, what I would suggest for, for some sellers is that because you're likely to sell not just on Amazon, but also on other marketplaces, and there's a ton of them in Europe, like eBay, obviously, and C Discount, and Larado, and the, 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 there's hundreds of them. Is that the changes we've been talking about are specifically for Amazon, but you're likely to be selling to other marketplaces as well, um, and on your own website to Europe. So it will probably make sense for a lot of merchants to look for a partner fulfillment company um, based in Europe where they can ship their, 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 their goods over in bulk and then have the fulfillment company ship them out in individual units as they're sold. Now, a bonded warehouse simply means that you can send your goods into the bonded warehouse and it's treated as if the goods have not actually entered the country until it's taken out of the bonded part and put into the, the normal fulfillment part of the warehouse. So it, it's really just a, a part of the warehouse or a bonded warehouse enables you to not pay the relevant VAT and customs duties until the goods are ready to be shipped, at which time they're taken out of the bonded section and fulfilled, and then the, the tariffs become, become due. Um, but Really, my recommendation would be to look at your entire business, not just the Amazon part of your business, and decide 
is Amazon fulfillment the way to go? Or would you prefer to effectively do merchant fulfilled orders out of a fulfillment partner in Europe? Or would you prefer to keep the stock in the UK and just sell to Europe and ship on a one-to-one basis to Europe? What you may also find is useful is to ship items in bulk to your fulfillment partner in Europe and then get your fulfillment partner to ship into the chosen FBA center for Amazon so that you can still make use of FBA. So ship all of your stock that's going to Europe into a fulfillment partner and then just ship smaller quantities into FBA. And this will be particularly relevant for um, overseas sellers um, who perhaps are, are shipping a pallet load at a time but only want half a pallet to go into FBA. If you're shipping a pallet from the US, it will be a lot cheaper to ship a whole pallet into say a, a, a warehouse in perhaps um, Germany and then get the German warehouse to ship a smaller quantity across to the UK because you're then only paying for the, the, the single international shipment rather than two international shipments. So it is going to be um, more, more complicated in the future. Absolutely. Um, I was just going to just going to say, Chris, do we want to just go to the last slide just so that the links are there for support and yeah, um, of course. Yeah, so that that link there at the bottom is the is the help page that we're talking about. And I just I just saw a question come in. I, I, I've lost it, but it was someone asking about how to get in touch with their uh, local e-commerce advisor that I spoke about earlier. What we do, if it's all right with you, Chris, is pop a link into the blog post for that. But an easy way. Yeah, of course. To, an easy way to do that um, just off the bat is if you go onto Google, put in find my local DIT office, the first link you get is find your local trade office and you just pop your inquiry in there and someone should get in touch with you. So that's just an easy way of doing it. Just to repeat that, let's just, just pop into Google, find my local DIT office and you should be able to find that to get in touch with your local e-commerce advisor. So an interesting question from Nimisha has just come in. Someone who hasn't sold cross-border yet, is there any support on where we should start? And I think that the, the best answer to that is Amazon's EFN or European Fulfillment Network is the place to start. And that will still run all the way up until the 31st of December this year. So you'll get the Christmas period in. If you've already got stock in Amazon FBA, enable EFN and it enables buyers from overseas to purchase your product and Amazon will ship it to them. There will be some um, carriage charges, obviously, um, but then you, 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 that, that's an easy way of starting to sell um, cross-border on Amazon. And the second one to look at is Amazon's Pan-EU FBA, where if you've got stock in an Amazon fulfillment center in the UK, um, signing up for Pan EU FBA for your products enables Amazon to decide how much of your stock to move to Europe on your your, your behalf. And as I say, this is the, the the brilliant part of Amazon's metrics that they can predict which country your stock's likely to sell in fastest and move it closer to that individual. And the massive advantage of Pan EU FBA is once your stock is in the local country, then it appears to the local buyer as local stock and eligible for Amazon Prime. And, and, and for you as the merchant, with Pan EU FBA, you only ever pay a local fulfillment fee as if the stock was still in the UK. So I would strongly encourage you um, that if you've not sold cross-border yet, sign up for either European Fulfillment Network, EFN, or Pan European FBA, Pan EU FBA, and start selling internationally now It'll be a lot easier in the, in the next few months until the 31st of December to get some experience of cross-border selling than it will be to jump in on the 1st of January um, when, when there's a customs border. And another question from Darren, which I think we'd already covered, um, but is worth reiterating, is Darren asked what happens to stock already in EU fulfillment centers after the 1st of January? And as we said earlier in the webinar, Amazon has stated that the inventory will continue to be sold in the UK and EU after the 1st of January. From the 1st of January, Amazon will not move it across the UK-EU border again. 
but you can still withdraw it from the warehouse to a local address, and then it's it's down to you to ship it across the UK EU border if you if you need to. So hopefully I, uh, that answers that one. Um, yeah, I think it, it's, it might be. Um, I've just got the that the FAQ up here, so I'll probably just just read it word for word just to make sure it's absolutely clear. What will happen to my inventory placed in the UK EU after the new customs border goes up on January the first, twenty twenty one? This inventory will continue to be sold within the UK and the EU. Amazon will not move it across the UK EU border, but you will be able to remove it from our fulfillment centres to a local address, and then you'll be able to ship it across the UK EU border if you wish to do so. So hopefully that's um that's quite that's quite clear but i think you covered that anyway chris so sorry to repeat that <laughs> and then ken is asking do ebay have a recommended solution post 1st of january 2021 and i think the answer is here um that ebay never handle your stock anyway um it's down to you to ship it however ebay do have a global shipping solution which with the global shipping solution, um, it works a little bit differently. It, it means that if an overseas buyer purchases one of your products, your responsibility is to ship it to eBay's fulfillment center in the UK, and then your responsibility ends. eBay's global shipping service is actually run by Pitney Bowes in the UK, and they are highly experienced at shipping cross-border and they also collect the duties and tariffs up front when, when the item is purchased on eBay. So it's, it's shipped um, and, and delivered duty paid. And this will continue for Europe. So if you signed up for eBay's global shipping program, um, then the global shipping program will continue post the 1st of January. And this is a great way of doing it because it means you don't have to worry about any customs or duty. And from a technical perspective, the way the global shipping program works is that the end consumer purchasing the product acts as the importer of record into their country. So if a German person purchases a product on eBay under the global shipping program, then you ship it to eBay's global shipping program fulfillment center. And the German buyer is then acting as the importer of record into Germany. Um, they're liable for all taxes and duties that, 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 that should be paid, but they'll pay them up front at the point of purchase, and the eBay's global shipping program will sort it out for you. And I can highly recommend that as a solution um, worldwide, not just for Europe. On the other hand, if you are a UK merchant after the 1st of January and you're shipping into Europe, then you will be responsible for the, the, the completing the customs declarations, etc. And um, the decision has to be made depending on which type of carrier you're using, whether you ship duty paid or unpaid, in which case um, your consumer could suddenly realise that the parcel arrives. And just as if a UK merchant buys something at the moment from, say, America, um, UPS will turn up and say, here's your parcel, there's some duty to pay. The same may happen with European consumers buying from the UK and vice versa. If you're buying from Europe um, <clears throat> and could arrive with the duty unpaid, then it's, it's likely that parcel force or someone will turn up on your doorstep and say, hey, you, you've, got a, you've got a parcel from Europe, but there's some duty to pay. Um, Question from Adam, what about auto remo removals from Amazon FBA? I set it up to remove my stock automatically after a certain time. Will auto removals be moved across the border? And I think Amazon have answered that, Adam, that um, no, they won't. And you will have to specify a local address um, to have your stock removed out of an EU warehouse. Yeah, I'd, I'd just reiterate that. I think that that's covered in that the the FAQ that we answered earlier, um, and Chris has, Chris has answered that as well. That no, also removals won't happen, unfortunately. Um, interesting question from Luke. Are there any low value thresholds for still shopping cross border um, with with parcel carriers? And I, I don't know the answer to that, but I suspect Tom, the answer is we don't know because the trade agreement hasn't been finalised. Yeah, I think that's that's probably the best way to answer that question is, unfortunately for now, it's a 
we, we don't we don't really know um hopefully we'll have some some updates on that um shortly and a question i think this is the last question we've possibly got time for from adam hewson i was going to do panny u fba this year should i bother anymore now amazon and i would both say absolutely there's still september october november december there's still amazon prime day to come there's still black friday and uh, cyber monday to come there's still christmas to come you do not want to miss out on your pan-european business over the 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 amazon prime day the black friday period and and the run-up to christmas um nothing changes until the first of january 2021 you can still sign up for pan european fba so we would we would very much encourage you to take full advantage and maximize your sales in the last four months of the year adam yeah i'd, I'd absolutely echo those comments like you say we've got four months um, as we all know between now and christmas is the busiest time for any anybody selling online so absolutely take advantage of it and i think to uh, it's, it's important to point out i think we made a comment on it on an earlier question. It's a really good way of getting some experience in cross-border selling, um, getting some getting some orders from the EU under your belt. So absolutely, I would take advantage of the offering for the next four months. Yeah, so take advantage of getting some cross-border experience before the customs and, 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 and tariffs and, and, and duties come in. And I, and I think the, 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 there has never been a better time to dip your toe in the water and find out how it works um, before um, it, it, it gets more complicated on the 1st of January. Now, what, what, what final thought for, for, for myself is that things are going to change rapidly over the next four months in, in the run-up to Christmas or in the 31st of January, uh, December, I should say, um, that, that URL for the Amazon help page is, is still on the screen. It encourages you to check back regularly because Amazon are going to want your, to, to support you with your sales um, just as they have done in the past. And if you've got a large European business on Amazon, um, then you won't want to lose the revenue and Amazon also will want to support you to keep that revenue and grow it in the future. So check back at that URL regularly, and also obviously um, come to tamebay.com on a regular basis for updates and more information. And uh, equally, don't forget to um, keep an eye on the DIT website, um, great.gov.uk, um, because they will also um, publish a, a whole ton of useful information and not just on Amazon, but on the international opportunity around the world. And uh, a lot of that, you, you could be jumping on straight away and not waiting for the 1st of January, because if you're already shipping to countries like Australia or the US, et cetera, um, you're already filling out customs paperwork, et cetera. It's just that you're gonna have to do that for Europe as well in, in, in the future. Um, today, Tom. Um, it's been a real revelation, and I know we've got a load of questions that we didn't get to answer. We will try and answer them, them, them in the future, but it just demonstrates what a, um, what a what a hot topic this is, and um, how important um, merchants are going to place on being able to continue to trade trade with Europe and around the world um, in the in the future. So, Tom, thank you so much for your time today. No, no problem. I think it's been a really good session and hopefully we've done a, done a good job of answering some of the questions. I think it's just important to uh, just know if you didn't manage to get the links, it's quite a long link. Um, if you do have a Seller Central account, when you log in, um, you should see a news section on the left hand side um, with a post uh, August 26th. If you click on that and read more, my advice would be bookmark that page and check it a couple of times a week just to see if anything comes up. Um, as Chris mentioned, do log on to the great.gov.uk website. Do get in touch with your local e-commerce advisor. It's an absolutely free of charge service, um, and they'll be able to, be able to help you um, with your cross-border strategy and anything to do with e-commerce. So it's, it's a really good idea to have a look on there. Look at the international opportunities that are available. 
there's always lots and lots going up. Um, as Chris mentioned, things are going to change. We are going to have to fill out customs documents, etc. So it's a really good time to, to look at new markets outside of the EU um, because you're going to have to be treating them the same way anyway. So um, I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank Chris for hosting today's webinar um, and thank everyone who joined today. Um, our, my contact information, I believe, will be going out. Um, so do get in touch if you want to follow up on anything.